Hey guys, it's Elias Deer, and welcome back to Game Breakers. This time we're going to be taking a look at glitches within Super Mario 64 DS, and my god are there a lot to cover. Everything from walking under and above water in Jolly Roger Bay, unlocking Wario a lot earlier than you should, game crashes, and more coming up. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into this fantastic game. Outside the castle, there's a cannon which allows you to reach the roof of Peach's castle. Sally, this cage blocks you from entering it until you collect all 150 stars in the game. But there is a way to get up there without any at all. By doing this at the start of the game, we can also skip having to speak with Lakitu by catching the bunny with a key. I'll get into that glitch in a second, but first let's get on the roof. There's a trick you can do which allows you to climb up a lot of hills in the game. This hill on the right side of the castle is normally unclimbable because you'll slide off it, but doing a certain technique, you can. You have to repeatedly do a slide kick, then hop out. Once you have that down, we have to begin running at a certain spot so we can get up there easier. See this rectangle in the hillside that looks a little brighter than the rest? We're gonna run parallel to that. So start running from back here, turn and jump up, then do the slide kick hop technique I showed you. You have to do this rapidly if you want to stay on the hill, but there is some room for error as you see me tongue a few times in between. I'd recommend just holding the R button down and timing your A button presses. There are other ways to get up here early, but this is the only trick that can be performed with all the characters. Once up on the roof, we can collect a few 1-ups and have a look around. By getting up here at the start of the game, we can actually enter the basement without ever having unlocked the front door. Head over to this spot next to the waterfall. You want to line up Yoshi with the edge of the castle here. Once you have it looking similar to this, begin running forward. Right before you fall off the edge, do a slide kick. If you did this right, you'll land on this steep slope and slide right into the castle wall. But since we have a lot of speed as you hit it, you'll fall right through and never begin swimming. So now we're walking underwater, which is pretty cool. You can now just walk over to the basement door, but be careful because we're very close to the top of the water, so a single jump could correct this glitch state and you'll have to start all over. Anyway, once inside, hop up and drain the water so you can enter this door every time you play the game. Since we're in the basement with zero stars, it can be a little hard navigating the castle. We can't use the key door to get back upstairs, so you'd have to enter a level from down here, pause, and exit course. Once up here, the dialogue that normally pops up when you enter the castle first will display now. A cool side effect of this glitch is having the key from the rabbit outside be on all the maps throughout the game. Head outside the castle and activate Lakitu. He'll show you where the key is on the mini-map, but instead of going to collect it, enter the basement door. Now every mini-map will show the key in a random location, but sadly, it's not actually there so you cannot grab it. In Bomb on Battlefield, there's a Koopa near this cannon. Tongue him, then quickly spit him out towards the side of it. As he's running against it, jump on him. You may not see it, but the Koopa actually fell out and is also inside that clump of pixels. If you tongue it, you'll eat the Koopa as you begin to ride the shell. Now Yoshi's tongue is sticking out while you're riding around, which it looks pretty funny. However, you've now become a ticking time bomb, because once you crash, the game will crash too. So enjoy it while it lasts, because once you make contact with something, this'll happen. Even entering cannons can't save you. Once you stand up, the game still crashes. But if you do want to prevent a game crash, simply pause and select Exit Course. While still in Bomb on Battlefield, there's a popular glitch we can do known as the Heaven's Portal. It occurs when you slide into certain walls with a lot of speed. The easiest way to do this is with the cannons around the map. When inside this one here near the Chain Chomp, line up the top of the arrow with the bottom of the floating island. Once you launch out, you'll fly up the side of the hill, then your screen will turn blue. After a few seconds, you'll see Yoshi slowly come back down into view, and you're now plummeting down back into the level. You can guide Yoshi pretty easily and have him land wherever you want. There's another one you can achieve by going to this one at the base of the mountain. When you enter it, hold right until it won't go any further. Upon looking down, you should see some trees. Set it to the top of this tree is barely poking through the bottom of the view hole and fire. As soon as you touch the fence, you'll shoot high into the air once again. I've combined the previous tongue glitch with this one just to see what would happen. I guided this shell into the cannon and performed the heavens portal I just showed you. When the cannon caught back up to Yoshi, his tongue was still out while still in the air. Surprisingly, I was able to land perfectly in another cannon and shoot out of that one before once again crashing the game. And for the final method, hop into this cannon on this side of the mountain. Aim it as far down and to the left as you can. You'll be in the sky once again, but this time I decided to go out of bounds and head for the key on the minimap. Just as I got there, I ended up dying. Anyway, there are other heavens portals we can do which I'll come back to in a little bit. Up next is a very easy way to max out on lives. In the third level of Thwomp's Fortress, there's a block that has a mushroom in it. Upon breaking it, pick it up and take the warp to the upper area of the fortress. Quickly double jump near the wall to grab the ledge and pull yourself up. There's a large wooden beam and if you run into it, you'll begin to rack up lives extremely fast. 
It only took me a matter of seconds till I reached the max of 100 lives. The only downside of this is that the lives don't get carried over after quitting. So every time you reload your save file, you'll have to perform this trick if you always want that many lives. Alright, now it's time for a pretty awesome glitch. This one allows you to clip out of bounds in the basement and access Bowser in the fire seat as Yoshi with as little as 8 stars. Before getting into it, we need to set up a few things first. Collect at least one star and speak to the toad in the rec room. This will spawn a bunch of rabbits around the map which we're going to use to clip out of bounds. Next, collect 8 stars to open Mario's painting. We don't actually need to use him, but we do need to unlock his door so the game doesn't crash later on. Go down to the basement as Yoshi and there will be a rabbit. Grab it normally to collect the key. We have to already have the key from this rabbit so that we don't get it in the cutscene when we clip out of bounds. Next, enter a level and die so the rabbit's position will reset. Now that it's back in this spot, run alongside it till it's at the Shifting Sandland painting. Run straight and tongue it just as it's about to turn around. You should slide forward with the bunny in your mouth and cause the painting to shake a little. If you didn't get close enough, enter the level again and die. Once you have him this close to the wall, you'll spit him out and you'll kind of be merged together. Now hold the L button, forward on the D-pad and mash A. The next window of text will close and you'll clip past the bunny and through the wall. As soon as the next text box closes, you'll fall into some water. This is what we want and we now have to do some pretty precise swimming over to the entrance of Bowser in the fire sea. Turn around and swim down and underneath the rest of the basement. If you swim too close to the land, you can get stuck in this room behind the door and have to restart. You want to land the top of Yoshi's head with the last little bit of land that you can see on the minimap. Turn so he's facing perfectly right and it's important that it's not slightly off. Begin swimming that way for a little until the corridor of the basement is just touching the left side of the bottom screen. This should be the exact position for the area containing the entrance to the Bowser in the fire sea. Hold down on the D-pad, then start swimming shortly after so you swim straight up. After a couple of seconds, you'll hop up into a dark room. We're now behind the Dire Dire Docks loading zone where the hole is and we can enter the Bowser stage. Since we didn't enter the door to this area the right way, the walls and floors will never be loaded in, but the loading zones are still there. As you can see here, I'm walking around and keep sliding off of something which is a little slope in the ground. Simply jump over to where the slope is and you should fall right into Bowser in the fire sea. Make sure not to die in here until you enter the boss fight because it'll kick you out and force you to enter Dire Dire Docks. Once in the fight with Bowser, we obviously can't throw him because we're Yoshi. However, when Bowser spits fire during the fight, a Mario Cap can spawn. This is why we needed to unlock him earlier or else the game would have crashed when it tried to spawn in Mario's cap. Once you defeat him, you can enter Dire Dire Docks and pause exit course. And there you go, you can now access upstairs with a lot less stars than normal because you need 30 stars to open the basement star door. You can also get the key from Bowser in the fire seat before even being able to open Bowser in the dark world, which is supposed to be the first time you face him. Now that we're upstairs early, how about we get Wario early? You not only need Luigi's flower power ability to get through the mirror, but we can enter Wario's painting before Luigi is even unlocked. As Mario or Yoshi, it doesn't really matter, run into this corner and long jump at it. You should start rising weirdly, and that means that you're on the right track. Eventually, with some luck, you'll fly right through to the other side. This glitch can be pretty difficult because your angle has to be pretty precise. Once on the other side, we can grab the star in this back room and enter the Wario painting. Make sure not to die in here either until you enter the fight or you'll get thrown out of the Luigi painting and have to start all over. Now that you've defeated the boss with a character you're not supposed to, you can unlock Wario before Luigi even is. Up next is a set of glitches that allows you to walk on water and underwater in one of my favorite levels, Jolly Roger Bay. First up is walking on water. Enter the level as Mario, but swim down near the sunken ship and pick up the Luigi cap. If you played the game before, you probably know that Luigi can run on water for a short period of time. Well, we're going to make it so we can do that forever and as Mario. Swim over to the land where you spawned in. There will be two Goombas here. You need to run into one and then jump on it shortly after. The timing is a little strange as if you go right away, it won't work. Wait just a tiny bit then jump on the Goomba. For some reason, this now allows us to run right onto the water and not fall in. This glitch was something I've always dreamed of as a kid playing this game. I'm not sure why, but this glitch is just mesmerizing to me. While in the water, you must keep moving and don't jump or you'll fall back into the water like normal. Now for walking underwater. While Wario, or wearing the Wario cap, pick up the flower power ability in the back area of the level. Immediately begin running towards the sunken ship. As the power begins to flash, start running up to the very top. You should start to slide down, and if the power up wears off as you're still sliding down, you'll now be able to walk around down here. I'm guessing the reason this happens is because as Metal Wario, you're already allowed to walk around like this. And since you're in the middle of sliding, the game can't put you back into the swimming state. You're kind of stuck in this area though because you can't get up and access the rest of the level. You can walk right through the ship and enter inside, but you will be returned back to normal again. There's a little trick you can do with Yoshi when a star spawns near an edge. Line up so your back is facing the ledge and Yoshi is facing the star. Jump, flutter back, and tongue once you're over the edge. 
Yoshi should grab the star and then fall. When I did it in Lethal Lava Land, the star cutscene was played while Yoshi was standing in lava. In Tiny Huge Island, you can die as you're collecting the star, but it'll still count. When collecting the star from the toad next to the entrance to Hazy Maze Cave, you'll fall in and can see the inside of the entrance, and after the text box closes, you'll enter the level like normal. You can do a similar thing when grabbing Mario's key. It'll kick you out of the level like you die, but it'll count as you grabbing the key and you can now unlock Mario. In Wet Dry World, there's a way to clip out of bounds. Up here there's a box that we need to push so it's slightly off the wall. Hop up on it and then face the left wall. Push up against it and then go into first person. Hold down left and just as the camera clips through the wall, press X again. You'll fall through the world and hopefully land in some invisible water. There is a chance that you fall and just die, so holding left will help make sure you don't. Now that we're out here, we can get to the underground town area, but it's pretty tricky. Follow the tube that you normally go down, but stay on the outside of it. When you're on the long stretch, swim as close as you can to the top of the tube without clipping inside of it. If you're close enough, you'll trigger the town to load in. We can take this glitch one step further by staying out of bounds and swimming in between the tunnel and the town. When you reach the corner, turn right and swim to the back corner. You can now clip back in bounds and grab the star behind the cage. This allows you to get the quick race through downtown star a lot faster. Still in wet dry world, there's a way that we can walk around underwater. Enter the level so the water is just above the ramp here and swim behind it. Trying to jump up will cause you to get pushed through the water and land on the ground. It's not anything crazy because you could just drain the water normally and walk around, but there are a few cool effects from doing this. The enemies down here can attack you and for some reason you cannot break this block. All the other ones in this underwater area are breakable but I guess since we have to jump into it, it won't activate. There's not a whole lot you can do while down here similar to the Jolly Roger Bay glitch, but I think it's still worth a shot. I tried doing the box camera trick that we just covered but I got stuck and also died. Moving over to Snowman's Land, pick up the box at the start of the level and take it over to the bully. If you can place it then cause him to run into the box, he'll stand on top of it kind of weirdly and then just begin walking away. He won't even pay attention to you anymore and he simply just walks straight. He's now prone to just walk off and kill himself. So I guess this is an easy way to beat the boss without having to do any real work? I don't know. While still in Snowman's Land, there's a cool way we can crash the game. Whenever you try and walk across this bridge, the gust from the snowman will knock you off and cause you to lose your hat. Now the snowman enemy will be wearing the hat, so just punch it as Wario or throw a box at it. You won't notice anything the first time you do it, but trek back up to the top and repeat the process. Killing the snowman again will cause two hats to pop out. Now every time he does this, the number of hats will multiply. You can keep doing this until the game becomes incredibly slow and crashes. Up next is what's known as the Hell's Portal in Shifting Sandland. At this pillar near the pyramid, run up the side and dive towards the top of it. Your screen will turn blue and eventually it'll catch up to the character. After another minute or so, you'll be able to see a very small version of the level. However, you'll never be able to get back into the level and that's why it's called the Hell's Portal. People have sat here for hours with no luck of returning, but simply pressing A or B will kill you so you don't have to reset. Still in Shifting Sandland, there's a way to swim around underneath the level. In the area with the toy boxes, stand in the middle of this tile and when the box is over top of you, punch it as Wario. The box will fly over and land in between the water and the sand. If you stood in the right spot when you punched it, you'll be able to walk underneath the box and clip out of bounds. You'll land in a huge pool of water so you're now free to explore underneath the level. I wanted to see how far out the water went, but I wasn't able to come up for air and eventually died. In Tall Tall Mountain, choose a level that has the owl and the tree at the start. Fly up and over the mountain towards the mushrooms. Let go so when you fall, you'll land next to them. Take the warp out and there will now be a random patch of water for you to swim around in. I'm not sure why, but water glitches are a common thing in this game. The water isn't too high, but swimming towards the spawn cancels the effect. Near the top of Tall Tall Mountain, there's a post you can ground pound that has a mushroom inside of it. If you tongue a coin as the mushroom lands on you, the animation will cancel. So now the power-up effect is still in place, but you're still normal size. It's pretty funny to see this occur because Yoshi just runs through everything. Sadly, this glitch only lasts as long as the mushroom effect normally would. Before we move on to reaching the final fight early, there's something we can do outside of the castle. At this tree near the body of water, charge up a run and then dive into the bottom of it. Your bottom will be halfway in the ground, so hold down and you'll clip out of bounds. You can now swim around in places you're not supposed to be. There's also a way to enter the basement by swimming behind the door, but I already drained the water in a previous glitch. I swam down as far as I could before running out of air. You can barely make out parts in the level from down here. It's pretty cool to see the outside of the castle from this way, and it's really easy to do. And finally, if you try and enter Bowser in the sky with anyone other than Mario or when you have less than 80 stars, you'll be halted by the endless staircase. However, there is a way to get past this and with any character you want. I'm going to choose Luigi, but it doesn't really matter. 
Head into the upper room that has TikTok clock in it and up to the second stair on the left. We need to be in line with the corner so continually run at it and press the L button so you put the camera right behind you. Now jump backwards so your feet line up with this row of tiles. Begin to charge up a run and just as you press up on the D-pad perform a slide kick. The screen will turn black and a few things can happen. You can die straight away, get warped up high but not be able to control him so you'll eventually die again, but you can also get warped and be able to control him. This is what we want. If you're lucky when you clip, you'll shoot forward and then you can move around. We want to land in the small room with the entrance to the final level so line them up with the door in the middle of the minimap and hold forward. That's what worked for me. The minimap will be completely gone but hopefully after a few seconds you'll take damage and land inside the room. This can be a little tricky because the room's textures aren't loaded in so we can't really see where to go. And this is what the room looks like normally so use this as a guide. The safest way to do this is to go into first person and look to see where the TikTok clock room is. Run in the opposite direction from that until you're pushed up against something. This should be the entrance to the level so hop forward a little and you'll fall right in. So now we're in the final level with characters besides Mario which will have some cool effects later on. It's okay if you die in here because you'll get thrown out of the entrance again with the room loaded. Just make sure not to game over as you'll have to redo this whole process. But now that we're in here, all that's left to do is defeat Bowser and here's where you'll start to see some effects of doing the glitch. When you grab the star to beat the game as Luigi or Wario, Mario will spawn next to you and you'll both just be standing still. The camera moves around but the characters don't. After the ending cutscene, one final glitch occurs. As the credits play, the game tries to spawn the character into scenes alongside Mario, who's supposed to be there. The rain only just popped down out of nowhere and it's pretty funny to watch. But it doesn't stop there. When they're showing off the rainbow ride level, your character doesn't land on anything and you die. The game throws you back outside of Peach's castle and this causes the sound to glitch out as well. No other audio plays besides Luigi's sound effects, which is kinda creepy. Upon entering the castle, the music comes back but some of the other sounds are still missing. The only way to fix this is to quit the game and reload it. So that's going to do it for this episode, if you enjoyed drop a like and subscribe. This is definitely the most effort and research I've put into a video so I hope it was worth the wait. Most episodes won't take this long to produce but I wanted to put everything I could into this game. I also want to give a big shout out to Sword This Link. Without him, I don't know if this episode would have ever been made. He covers glitches within a lot of games so check him out in the description if you're interested. But with that, I'm going to get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!